If you want to help with the luau, that's going to be August 20th, please just come to the kids' classroom, the big kids, and after service, and we'll have that meeting real quick. All right, and uh, a set. The 20th? August, tw August 20th is the luau. Yeah. But today's the short meeting. Yeah. Today's short meeting for anyone wishing to help out. Which, Christy, did you give her a mic? Or please? Uh, Sit. Picture. And we do need baby pictures. If you can bring baby pictures by next week um, so we can get the games ready for the 20th, um, please, if you've got any baby pictures and you want to part uh, participate in the game we're doing, just bring a baby picture of you, uh, maybe time this week or next Sunday. And we're going to get the game set up for that. So. And on a sad note, uh, one of our members uh, and one of the canine members that we as a church have grown to love, his name is Donnie, uh, who actually always has been coming with uh, Gary and Jan, uh, passed away this week. So we need to make sure and to uh, to just let them know how much we, we miss Donnie. It's just permanent fixture here. And, uh, so just make sure and let you know we, we miss and we love you guys uh, and we miss uh, our favorite pet here at this at church. Um, also, next week uh, we'll be having communion together. We'll have the Lord's table here in the middle and we're having communion together. So please come prepared to take the Lord's Supper. Uh, while we're doing communion, also it'll be known as the, as the family service. So we won't have children's ministries on that day. Uh, because everyone are great to come in together uh, as one, as a body of Christ. So that is next Sunday. Please make sure and keep that in mind. Okay, this week on the 10th Thursday at 11.30, Senior Saints. Um, I have a picture for that also. We're going to have chili dogs, potato salad, coleslaw, and brownies. So... Um, Come out and join us at 11.30 a.m. Thursday for lunch. So. They have the best food, and I'm over 50, so I qualify. So if you're over 50, please make sure and come and be a part of that. Yeah. Um, also, Ladies Fellowship is next, or I'm sorry, the 13th. That is next week, after service. And they're going to have Mexican food. They do a craft. Janet's normally in charge of the craft. Um, they do some worship. And they just have a great time. So uh, that is next Sunday after service. So next Sunday is a busy day. It's a busy day. It's a busy day. And uh, actually at the Crawford County Fair, how many of you guys made it to the fair, uh, Crawford County Fair? Wow. How many of you live in Crawford County? Yeah, okay, well, there you go. We're starting somewhere there. Uh, anyway, at the fair, uh, actually, uh, some of our membership was actually there for the Kansas for Life and had a booth at the fair and the different ones stopped by and got the chance to visit to many people. So I'm so grateful for that ministry and what they accomplished. And uh, we were able as a church to give them, right Jeff, a tent of sorts that covered you like that. Otherwise I think it was a hundred degrees that day. So hey, you know, I was able to minister to them. So thank you all for serving and also we need to be continuing to pray for that ministry. Okay, guys, um, the prayer box is still located by the front door on that table. When you come in, um, there's the podium, and Treva has some prayer cards available there also. And um, we put down at the bottom, we added a section that said, if you'd like to be put into the bulletin for an urgent prayer need, please fill that out. Other than that, you can drop that into the box. They pray over those. Um, so... If you have any prayer needs, you can fill those cards out. They're blue. So, and if you have an emergency prayer need, please let us know. So we can pray right away. If you need something put into the bulletin right away, please, please call and let me know. So we can get that taken care of. Yes. Um, Terry Fafford has COVID again. And she's on oxygen if we could all refer. Okay. Sherry Stafford, um, she has COVID and she's on oxygen, so we need to pray for that. So, see, those situations are considered emergency situations. Other than that, we just have a, uh, you know. But we do ask um, if you could at least put 
maybe a first name or something that they can have on there. Some of them are just completely blank without any sort of um, identification. Uh, it's, it's kind of better to have some sort of name where they can specifically pray over that person. So. And please make note of that. Uh, prayer is important. My house is called the house of prayer, is what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. And so we do have that box once again, as you mentioned, in back. But uh, let us know. Uh, touch base with us. Call the office. Missy also takes those. And, and if you're in, in need today, uh, make sure we pray for one. I know Michelle is facing a surgery. I saw her thirsty right there. Uh, uh, and facing a surgery this month. Uh, and others. Make sure and let us know. Uh, and also, if you see someone missing that you haven't seen for a while, a while, a while, help us out and make sure you touch base with them. Send them a card, give them a call, text, what have you. Let them know that they are missed. So if you, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I feel like Lisa and I heard that communication. There. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I interrupted. I'm sorry. So make sure and to uh, be mindful of the prayer uh, and to pray one for another. That's what we're going to do in just a, a few moments to pray over our offering as well. And we're going to have meet and greet, give you opportunity to place your tithes and offerings in the boxes in back or even plates up front. And also get a chance to meet one another. If you see someone you haven't talked to for a while, make sure to take advantage of that. We have a gap here. You can meet right here. Big time. Uh, you can come together and make sure and greet one another. Is there anything else before we go Lord in prayer? We're kind of like Abbott and Costello. <laughs> but also, I was just going to make a quick note. The church, I'm here, I'm here Monday through Thursday, 9 to 1. If you guys, the sanctuary's open. I mean, you guys, you know, you know that. Um, somebody's always here if you need to come in and, and come in here and pray or whatever you need to do. So. Yeah. That being said, would you please stay in the middle of the house and we'll pray today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you do. I pray over this service, God. I pray, Spirit of God, you have your way. I, I pray you move and bind us together. Let the love of Christ permeate through each and every one of us, Father. And as we praise you, God, I pray that there would be a sweet savor even to you, God, and that we worship you from the heart, truly in spirit and in truth. And God, even as your word is presented today, even the depths of your word, I pray, Spirit of God, that you would saturate our soul and let us see the reality of the moments and how we be ready for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, over the offering today, I pray that you have your way uh, in our offerings, our tithes. I pray, God, that you would have anointed and that would do great things for the cause of the kingdom of Christ. Lord, we thank you, God, and receive this. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Let's take a few moments to welcome one another.
better care of you. A better place for our people and you. It's the right thing. So we invite you to come even into the middle section and just worship him, whatever you're comfortable with, 
but invite you to make sure and give God all the praise and worship he deserves. I'm going to read John 1, 10 through 14. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as, as, but as, many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth.
the most powerful name. He is the one that came down from heaven and he did that for you. There are so many people that wonder, that doubt themselves, that doubt God. There's so many people suffering from depression and anxiety. And it's sad because we're broken. And we're broken people. We see that in others. And we can't save them. But Jesus can. And we can lead them to him. Amen. And he uses us to do so. Amen. And sometimes, whenever we have that, we're going through, and we can relate to them, or we've been through it, we keep silent. Jesus doesn't want us to be silent. We need to share that name. We need to seek that name. We need to pray for those that are broken in his name. Because he's the one that saves. He's the only one that will lead them to the Father. He's the only one that can heal them. As we worship him this morning, we're going to remember what he's done for us. And we're going to sing it. And we're going to sing it loud to each other. And we're going to sing it loud to God. And we're just going to praise him and worship him. And we're so thankful for the love that he has for us.
fighting for us. Lord, we thank you for never giving up on us, Lord. We thank you for when we give up on ourselves, you've never given up on us. We thank you for fighting for us, Father, never leaving us nor forsaking us. Father, I thank you for the grace you show even for us standing here worshiping you today. I pray your mercy on us, Father. Forgive us. Lead us in your paths and your way. Spirit of God, I pray you saturate this building today. I pray you have your way. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
church, someone ought to shout how good God is. Someone ought to say, God, you are good. Praise your holy name. Someone ought to testify how great our God is. Someone needs to share how God brought you. He went after you out of your Egypt. He went after you. There was no shame, as someone said last week. There's no sorrow. And he is good. He's just that good. Someone want to shout and testify how good he is. Someone want to share at this time. Somebody speak up and say how good God is. God is great. God is everything. God is everything. God has protected me. God has protected you. God, you are good. God, you are good. Someone else. Mr. God Ch- of peace. He's a God of peace. Oh. Wow. He's a God of peace. He never fails. He never fails. Never leave you nor forsake you. Someone else. He has sustained me and held me. Amen. God brings families together. Amen. Amen. I've got a son if you want to hold him up for a little bit. Amen. 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 Someone else, how good God is. God has guided and protected my family, and I thank him every day for all that he has done for us. Yes. yes. He has met all of my needs above and beyond. Um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a true friend that never turned his back on him. I'm done. Amen. Yes, that's true. Jesus is everything. Jesus plus nothing is everything. <laughs> Jesus is wonderful. Amen. Amen. When you feel alone, he'll carry you out of the darkness. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise him. Father, we thank you. Father, even today, there's many of us, all of us are facing life each and every day. Maybe today someone's on the mountaintop praising God for their family going home. Uh, maybe someone is saying, God, you've been good through the hard times. And maybe someone is in those hard times right here, right now. Maybe you're fighting some depression or anxiety. Maybe you're fighting uh, even in family. Maybe you're fighting whatever it may be. Hey, the fight is his. Father, we give you the fight. We give you praise. We are victors in your name. Yes, yes. And Father, we testify of your goodness, of being there when we're lonely. Yes, yes. You, you've been there through it all, through thick and thin. And you're there on the mountaintops too. Yes. And we do praise you, God, because you are just that good. You are our protector when we go through our daily walk. You are the one who provides for us, Father. Thank you, God. And we praise your holy name. We love you. In Jesus' name, the church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated as Children's Church is dismissed at this time. Church God is good. <laughs> I can't say that enough. You turn to Scripture to Romans chapter 11. Romans 11. <clears throat> and I want to encourage you that <clears throat> you're welcome to get your phones out at any time and take pictures of any slide that you wish to. Uh, maybe a scripture that stands out to you will remember. If your memory is not as maybe more like mine, I don't remember. Where was that? Well, you take a picture of that. I found that to be very nice. So you're welcome to do so. I encourage you to do that. And if I see you with your phone, I'll try to get out of your way so you can get the picture or what have you. But whatever, the spirit, the spirit of God is moving. And you know what? This is his word. It's powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. And, and so often, it, you know, even preaching the word, it cuts me too. 
And so we need to make sure, and maybe uh, God speaks to you, take that moment and to even take a picture of a scripture that stands out to you. Romans chapter 11 is actually kind of a tougher scripture. Uh, it's talking about the children of Israel. <clears throat> and we think of Israel, we always think of old, but actually, you know, we even think about even currently. And in Romans 11, it deals about the children of Israel and the, the remnant, <clears throat> the remnant from them. And so the title of the message is The Remnant Chosen by Grace from Romans chapter 11. I encourage you to read the whole chapter uh, for sake of time today because I have enough here for three hours and we'll try not to do that. Uh, then we'll skim some of this chapter in Romans chapter 11. Even verse 1, it says, I say then, has God cast away his people, speaking of Israel? Certainly not, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham. Mind you, Paul is speaking, he's an Israelite, that God miraculously reached out to him on the road to Damascus and saved him for the cause of going to the Gentiles. <clears throat> God has not cast away his people from whom he foreknew. That's an important scripture you have my permission to highlight in your scripture and then the word of God. It says God did not forget his people. He has not forgotten his people. He has not forgotten Israel and even us even today. <clears throat> or do you not know uh, that what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel saying, Lord, they've killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what does this, the divine response say to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Even so then, at this present time, there is a remnant. Everyone say remnant. remnant. A remnant, according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is a no longer grace. But if it's of works, it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. Now jump on down, if you would, please, to verse 11. It says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Certainly not. But through their fall, speaking of Israel, through their fall, to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Someone say, Amen. Amen. Salvation has come to Gentiles because of Israel's fall. Now, if their fall is riches for the world, and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Let's jump on down to verse number 28. Concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but concerning the election, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For as you were once disobedient to God, you were once, aren't you glad you aren't what you used to be? Amen. <laughs> you were once disobedient to God, yet have now obtained mercy through their, speaking of Israel, through their disobedience. Even so, there also have been, now been, disobedient that through the mercy shown you, they also may obtain mercy. For God has committed them all to disobedience, that he might have mercy on all. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how the unsearchable are his judgments and his ways, past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has become his counselor? Or who has first given to him? And it shall be pre repaid to him. For all of him and through him and to him are all things. And to the glory, to, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We plead the blood today, Father. Forgive us of our sins and shortcomings, God. You are so merciful. Thank you for going after us. Thank you for never giving up on us, Father. And I pray today, Spirit of God, you would encourage us, even if we are the remnant that you have held. Father, I pray your mercy, and I pray we exalt your holy name and give you the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
How many of you have heard of Israel? I mean, even of old, but even today. Even today. And you'd think as much as you hear about it, it would be massive. I mean, like all of Europe or something. I mean, Israel. But you look at it, it's actually small, even on the map. It's very small. The total size of the state of Israel is 8,630 square miles. About the size of the state of New Jersey. And has about the same number of inhabitants. It, it's that small. Israel is the 10th most powerful country globally. Dominating headlines, shaping global economies. Isn't that interesting that you hear so much about Israel? That's God. Amen. Say it again. That's God. That, amen. Amen. Most definitely. And we're going to learn more about that even today. About 81% of the Israeli adults are Jewish, even today. About 81%, which means they don't embrace the Messiah. They're still looking for his coming. They haven't embraced the Messiah as of yet, even to this day. And it says that uh, <clears throat> uh, while the remainder are mostly ethic ethically <coughs> Arab and religiously Muslim, about 14%, and of Israel, 2% are Christians today. So as we read the scripture, we ponder, how could God call upon a remnant or even say about Israel, uh, about how he has not forgotten his people and he's going to call them back when we know even today there's only like 2% that are Christians. That's small. God's all about the remnant. He doesn't forget we're going to talk prophetically even while he wants to bring them together. See, even Israel, if you visit today, it's an amazing city. And how many of you have been to Israel? Awesome. I have not had the privilege. I would love to go. I would love to go. Uh, it's an amazing place. And, you know, the Temple Mount is where all the fighting is over. And that is huge. Can you imagine someday, someday, maybe shortly... Jesus is going to rule and reign from that temple now. Isn't that amazing to think about that? It's called the millennial period, the kingdom age. But even today we see, as the scripture is talking about, and Paul is speaking, being a Jew, saying that, yeah, for a time period, that this is where they're at. And even goes back to talk about Elijah. In Romans 11, 1, this is what we read. I asked then, did God reject his people? Certainly not. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. There are some that teach today that Israel was a thing of the past. That now we Christians are the new Israel, the chosen people. How many of you know that God's not forgotten about Israel? Amen. I mean, it was prophesied that they would come together as a nation in 1948. They did. Wow, how did that happen? It's coincidental, right? And yet this little speck on the map is, uh, you hear about it greatly, and all the fighting going on, and, and no matter what president we elect, that there will never come peace until the Prince of Peace comes back. There will never be peace. Even Scripture says we're to be praying for Israel. Even when you pray for peace in Israel, what you're saying is, Jesus, come back soon. So it's amazing to think even Paul is saying that God has not forgotten about Israel, even though there is 2% Christian today in Israel. Have not embraced, isn't God merciful? Yes. I mean, nine, that would mean, and now no, I, I no, wasn't a genius in math, but yet if I think 2% are Christians, that means 98% are not. Yet God's not forgotten them. See, he remembers the remnant. He remembers the remnant. He's all about the faithful remnant. And I want to encourage you today, even through this message at the end of the day, no matter what size our church is, the reality is this, that we need to be a faithful remnant, and he's not forgotten you. He's not forgotten you in your life. Matter of fact, you're here because of his grace and his mercy. And he's not forgotten about Lighthouse. He's not forgotten about Fellowship of Arkansas. He's not forgotten about... He knows all about the remnant, the remnant. 
He mentions even in 1 Kings chapter 18 and 19, and I encourage you to read that. I'll give you a little summary of this guy named Elijah. Ever heard of him? Elijah? <coughs> Elijah was a prophet of God, an amazing prophet of God. And, and it, as it was, Israel had fallen away into the, the, the other kingdoms of the world. And it even embraced Baal worship, sacrificing even their own children to Baal. That's how far they were falling. And yet they were in a drought. And I'm so glad for a few rains we've gotten. Praise God for that. Yes. Because I was beginning to think, we're the next drought. I was looking for that little cloud. I'll tell you the story about that. So the reality was they were in a drought. It's in 1 Kings chapter 18. And the nation was suffering of this drought. Uh, and lo and behold, Elijah the prophet uh, came along. Meanwhile, the prophets of Baal, about 450 of them, uh, were worshiping Baal. And the country had gotten behind him. You know, just because everyone's doing it doesn't mean it's okay. Right. Boy, you guys have not experienced life like in some ways I have. Just because everyone's doing it doesn't mean it's okay. Right, right, right. Can someone say amen? amen? Just because the world says it's okay and some of the church, and maybe more of the church, says it's okay doesn't mean that it's okay. Right. That's right. No matter what a preacher, prophet, or anyone may say, they cannot ever, God will not violate his word. And if they say something other than his word, they are living, they are giving you a false teaching, a false doctrine. Even though the community may embrace it, no, it's still God's word, right? It's still God's word. So in 1 Kings 18, that Elijah went against the prophets of Baal. And what happened was he said this. He said, hey, we're going to declare, and I love the scripture that says this. Let me mark this. I got a mark. I like this question. He says, how long will you falter between two opinions? Is the Lord, if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. And that's in 1 Kings 18, verse number 21. You now there's a decision made. I like the way he put that. He said, Elijah said, if the Lord is God, follow him. Be obedient to him. If Baal or other gods of this world are God, follow them. We're going to find out. But my word, one thing in Revelation 2 is very clear. God hates a lukewarm believer. That's right. You'll see that in Revelation 2, I think, verse 10. God hates, a matter of fact, it says in Scripture, I will spew you out of my mouth. In other words, <laughs> lukewarm people make God sick. Meaning that we are to be on fire for God. Hey, church today, decide, who are you going to follow? If God is God, follow Him. Obey Him. Do what He asks you to do. Or if the world is your God, follow it like much of the world is. But we know where that goes. We know where that goes. So Elijah makes that statement. And then he says, hey, let's do a little project. I'm paraphrasing it, of course. This is revised, revised, revised standard. <laughs> he says, that, I'm going to do a little experiment with you. Your prophets of Baal, you, you build an altar. You build your altar, and but you must build it without wood. Yeah, no wood. And so you, you butcher your cow, your calf, put it on the altar, and then you call upon Baal to consume it. Let's see how you do. And so they did, the 450 prophets of Baal, and they got around, they built the altar, and they put their bull calf on the altar, and, and then they, but they weren't allowed wood. And so they tried to call upon their God and call down fire from heaven, and he wouldn't listen. And they did this till at least till noon. They started even mutilating themselves and trying to cry out. And about noontime, I really like Elijah because he said, basically, are you through yet? Are you about done? I, I love that. I, I can relate to that attitude sometimes. Are, are you about done yet? And then and they're saying, okay, we're done. And he says, now watch this. So he built an altar to the Lord. He got 12 stones, representing the 12 tribes of Egypt, uh, 12 tribes of Israel, rather. 
and he got the 12 stones around and he didn't put any wood there and he uh, put the bull on the altar and then he did he went so far as to build a, a trench around it and he said now douse it with water and they doused it with water and he said douse it again and they doused it again and he said oh but we'll, we'll do it again and they doused it with water again doused it no man can light this fire no one can light this fire and then, lo and behold, God consumed with fire the altar before him. He brought fire down from heaven. Wouldn't it be great if we could call fire from heaven? I think that would be. If the Spirit of God said, Pastor, call fire down from heaven, I'd say it. We'll see what happens. And I wonder, what if God even said, like Ananias and Sapphira in Acts? Acts 5, you'll read about that. Ananias and Sapphira, this isn't in the notes. I'm just getting off notes. I need to get back to it. The Ananias and Sapphira were lying to the Holy Spirit, acting like something they weren't. And then, and basically, Peter said to Ananias, Have you given this much money? He said, Oh, yeah, I've done all that. He said, No, you didn't. <laughs> Fell over dead. And then, shortly thereafter, his wife, who conspired with him, and said, Did you give this much money? She said, Yes, we did. And fell over dead. Boy, that would bring some fear to the church, wouldn't it? Amen. Let's line up. I'm like, God's going to give me a revelation of pure honesty of every one of you. And I'm going to ask you questions, and you better answer right. <laughs> Would that be fear to like? So God is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. So we see what happened back to Elijah, that he called down fire from heaven, and God consumed the fire. But Elijah even went so far as to say, take those prophets of Baal and take them down to the river, and they, they actually executed all of them. So the children of Israel said, hey, that is God. I see who God is. And we're going to follow him. You'd think it would be a great revival, right? I mean, they're on fire for God. On fire. That's great. Anyway, they're on fire for God because of what God had done. And it's a great revival. It's going to spread throughout the land. But that's not what happened. What happened was Ahab, the king, went back and told his wife, I would not advise anyone naming their baby girl Jezebel. Would not advise it. <laughs> Jezebel was an evil lady. Not a lady, a woman. Evil queen. And Ahab went back and reported all that had happened. I mean, after all, all your, uh, the prophets of Baal have been murdered or done. So she didn't succumb to God. She gave in to her God. And as a matter of fact, so much so, she went after Elijah. She said this, it was told Jezebel that Elijah had done how he killed all the prophets with the sword. And then came into a, I'm sorry, back up. Killed all the prophets with the sword. And so he, Jezebel said, go after and slay him. Kill him. You think it'd be Elijah with a cape, right? Like a big E on his chest, and I could just visualize the cape in the wind, and Elijah being the strong man, saying, no, I'm not, no. He ended up running. He ran to a cave. Actually, the scripture says this. There, there he came to a cave and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, what are you doing here? Don't you love God's patience? I mean, Elijah, you think he'd be a pillar of courage, yet he ended up being down, out, depressed, and even goes to a cave and said, woe's me. Have you ever had a woe's me party? had a woes me party. It amazes me that people come to those parties. A woes me party. And I dare say we've all been there. And maybe you're there today. I'm not trying to make a mockery of where you are. Because we've all been there. Where, you know, you think the world's over in and there's no hope and, and you think that everyone else is a mess and I'm the only one. It's just me. I'm the only faithful one. We start going there. We're emotional people. And that's where Elijah was. He's back in a cave somewhere. And God's so gracious. And he says, hey, Elijah, and this isn't a rebuke. He says, what are you doing? And Elijah says, hey, you know, all these great things happen, but they're all forsaking you. The revival didn't take place. And all the Israelites are going right back where they came from. New Testament says, like the dog to the vomit, the hog to the water. That's in Peter. And they're all, they've all, don't you love that word all? There's one thing that I, 
Where's my wife? And she's not here today. I can talk about you, right? <laughs> she can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter anyway, because I was talking about my wife one time. She was in Arkansas. Someone was texting her while I was talking about her. She knew about her before the service was over. You know, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> but one thing we do is when we, one of the other one, I'm trying to be as equal as possible, do something wrong. What's our tendency? You always do that. Don't you hate that? You always. And your first thing is, no, I don't. But that's what we gravitate to. You always do that. As if that's who you are. Well, that's what Elijah did. He said, they're all a mess. Can you relate to that in our today's world? You start, and how many of you listen to the news? You know what I mean? I do something. I do like 20 minutes a morning. 20, and I'll have kind of the update. But you can be like, wow. The whole world's a mess. I think only Lighthouse is safe today. <laughs> we start getting smaller, and I wonder about Lighthouse sometimes, you know? See how we can do? How we can start, woe is me. And Elijah was having one of those parties, and that's what he was doing. He was in a cave, and God showed his power and his presence, even the, through the wind and, 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 and the rocks and what have you. And Elijah's like still saying, woe is me. Just, just, take, just let me die. Just take me out. I'm, I did my part. I was faithful. Just be done. Let's go. And then God even asked the same question again and said, what are, what are you doing, Elijah? God is so gracious. In verse 10, it says this. He said, I've been very jealous for Yahweh, the God of all the armies, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life. Please take it away. That was Elijah's decree. Take it away. And then God suddenly says this. I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all the knees of which have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth which has not kissed him. God reminds Elijah, you're not alone. You're not alone. I kind of find comfort in that. You're not alone. He says, hey, no matter how you're feeling today, i got 7,000 over here that have not bowed to Baal, that's still faithful. I've got seven, and I've not forgotten them. I know my remnant. I know my people. And then he says to Elijah, basically, so get up and let's get moving. I find that kind of encouraging in today's world because we can get very discouraged. In 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18, it says this, So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Now, I don't know about you. I find great encouragement in the scripture in this one right here. It says, because we have a tendency to look at what's around us. And think life is all about this moment. When it's a season that we're going through. And we can get all our focus on the moment and to find ourselves down, out, depressed, much like Elijah. When the reality says, hey, your life is bigger than this moment. You're going to make it through this season. I've got bigger plans for you. There are others going through what you're going through. And, and I'm helping them too. You're not alone. Let that speak to someone today. You're not alone. See, God still remembers what's going on. He's not out of control. Even the wrath of God. You know, it frustrates me even if you watch the news. You think, they've got them. Have you seen even the, some of the politicians and things going on? And they, they find out these things and they talk about it. But nothing seems to happen. It's amazing to me. It's amazing. I'm not a Republican, I don't, whatever. It's amazing to me. And you start thinking, is the world so perverted and mess that they're all getting away with it? No, the reality is they're not getting away with anything. Leave my bull that. 
They're not getting away with anything. God does. As a matter of fact, it says in Scripture, the wrath of God is coming. In Romans 1.18, 8, it says this, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. God has not forgotten. He knows what's going on. He is in control. He even talks about sexual immorality in Leviticus 20, Romans 1, as well as 1 Corinthians 6. In our scripture, even in Romans 1, 26 through 27, it says this. That is why God gave them up for to disgraceful sexual appetites. For both their females and change the natural use of themselves into one contrary to nature. And likewise, even the males left the natural use of the female. Sexual perversions. You know, how many of you have watched the the new movie out, The Sound of Freedom? I, I strongly would encourage you. It, it's a tough, tough movie to watch. And it brings about the sexual perversion of our society, of our world. Did you know America is the number one nation of human trafficking? Yes. America? And you're about now saying, man, Pastor, I thought you were going to build us up. Sometimes we've got to get brought low so we can raise that up. That's our society at large. Sexual perversion is running rampant. And unfortunately, much of the church is embracing much of it, just trying to keep their doors open. Shame on the church. Amen. Shame on the church. Even if it's not the most popular statement, the word will last for an eternity. Amen. The word will last for an eternity. There is a remnant. Are you part of that remnant? You know, the question still is, who are you serving? And I've already said, be either be on fire for God, radical, I like the word radical, or go ahead and pursue the world. Don't try this middle ground stuff, because that's a miserable place to be. You know, I grew up on the farm, and so how many of you have crossed barbed wire fences? How many of you got stuck on a barbed wire fence? You are stuck, and that's not a good place to be. That's kind of like a lukewarm believer. You're kind of stuck. You're on one, one side and both, but you're not pleasing anyone. You're sure not pleasing to God. You're sure not pleasing to God. You know, there's a, in our scripture here, it talks about a promise even to Israel. Even to Israel. Even like today is only 2% Christian. God's not forgot about the remnant. As a matter of fact, in the scripture, it even talks about that he's allowed this period for the Jews in their rebellion so that we might be grafted in and saved. Even says the latter part of this first, first verse here, verse 26, 25, until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. Do you realize the time period we're in? Gentiles? Unless you're a Jew today. Gentiles? This is a glorious time. This is a time for you and me to be on fire. This is a time period that's been allowed by God and said, okay, Jews in your rebellion, I'm not forgotten you, and I remember my remnants, but for a time period, we've been allowed to come into the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And they become jealous of us. They become jealous of us. My word, this is our time, people. Who are you going to serve? The world or God? Some encouraging scriptures. Did you know God's merciful? Yes. How, who in here has got God figured out? Have you? You got God figured out? Good. You and me? <laughs> Nobody, no pastor, prophet, will ever figure out God. And scripture even says that. It says here in Romans. Uh, 11 verse 33 and 36 oh how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge how impossible it is for us to understand that it's his decisions and his ways or who can know the Lord's thoughts who knows enough to give him advice and who has given him so much that he needs to pay it back can we ever pay God back for everything comes from him and exists by his power 
and is intended for his glory. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen. He even says in Ephesians 2, 4 through 5, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, has quickened us together with Christ. Even when we were gone. Romans 5, 8 says, While we are yet sinners, at your worst day, Christ died for us. 1 Peter 1, 3 says this, God is so good. God is so good. And by raising Jesus from the dead, from death, he has given us new life and a hope that lives on. Amen. Who can figure out God? I, I can't grasp his mercy. I can't grasp his grace. You know, I've said before, it's a good thing I'm not God. I'll be calling down lightning on people, <laughs> certain people. Isn't there some people? Let's be real. Isn't there some people you like to get zapped? You thought, you know, just, just God, take them out now. You know, just good thing we're not God, right? He's far more merciful than we are. <clears throat> far more merciful. As a matter of fact, you're sitting here and you are born again believers if you've accepted Jesus Christ. And, and it's easy for us to get complacent. But the reality is you weren't always where you are now. You were not always. I want to tell you what my biggest struggle was being raised in a Christian home. Self-righteousness. Works based. Meaning like, I can never do enough to please God. I mean, my word says I went, I went to church three times a week. That's got to mean something, right? I mean, check the boxes. I'm a little higher. I'm a little higher than you are just because I made it three times a week. No, I'm not. But I was in that trap. And I remember even in Matthew uh, chapter 23, it says, except your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, you study the Pharisees, they're pretty righteous as far as the law. And the reality is that you've got to exceed that. You've got to be better than that. Matter of fact, where you are right now, you are not good enough to earn it. None of them. None of you deserve it. But pastor, I'm, I'm pretty good. No, you're not. There was none good, no, not one. None righteous. No, not one. <clears throat> I love God's grace. But that doesn't mean abuse it. Romans 6, 1, what? By surviving sin and grace may abound? God forbid. God forbid. God loves you. God is merciful. And he has called out a remnant. I want to encourage you, church, today. Stay the course. Be steadfast and strong. Be courageous. Stay the course. Don't give up. Because God has got his remnant. He's very patient. And he will see you through to the end. In Ephesians 5.27 it says this, that he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Church, we're to be holy. We don't hear much talk about that anymore. Maybe we hear so much even from a lot of churches is how good you are. How good you are. You are so good. You know, we could probably pack this church if I start telling everybody. We start telling you, everyone, you're all good. Come on in and the pastor will tell you how good you are. And what a shock when they come to the lighthouse and the pastor says, you're all no good. <laughs> but is that a biblical truth? <clears throat> the reality is, only because of him. Amen. Only because of him. That I can stand redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I can stand before him and not be ashamed. Not be ashamed. Because I know Jesus Christ. He's my Lord, my Savior. His blood covers all my sin. Past, present, and the future. And you know what? I'm a member of the remnant. I'm a member of the remnant. I'm a member of the ones that stay, that stay in the course. I'm a member of the ones that's obedient to the end. 
I'm a member of the remnant church that God has not forgotten. He will never forget it. There will always be a remnant. All the world may say the church is diminishing and going away. It will never go away. Can someone say amen? amen. It will never go away. And how about church? I, I want to be in the remnant. Right? Fired up. And he's coming back for some people, people, not some, for a remnant that's ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hey, don't go give in to all the teaching of this world today. I was actually in a denomination at one time that was struggling with money and numbers. And they said, we're willing to compromise just so we can keep our denomination afloat. And that's what they tried. It ended up not working to them, and praise God, it went back to the roots. Because the reality is, it's not about numbers. It's about those that are His. That are His. Are, are you His? Are you His? Are you a child of the King? Is He your Lord and Savior? Does He live within you? Is the Spirit of God within you? Why are you ashamed? Why are you doing what you're doing? It's time to stand up and say, God is my King. And I'm merely his servant. Amen. Because mm -hmm. I'm a member of the remnant. See Romans 11.5. We read the scripture. Even so then at this present time. Also there is a remnant. According to the election of grace. Church. Let's be on fire. Let's be on fire for God. Let's, let's be a part of the king. Let's not be embarrassed or compromised. We are a part of of the remnant. We are born again believers. I am a child of God. I have that blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm a member of the remnant church. Oh, I'd love to see great revival. But based on 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it actually says there's going to be a great falling away. Just like Israel did. Oh, America won't fall. Did you know America? Here, here's a, here, did you know this question? America is not mentioned in Scripture? <laughs> what? There's no red, white, and blue in Scripture? It's not even mentioned. It, if it is, it's vaguely. It's not all about America. It's about His people. It's about Israel. And the Gentiles that have been grafted in. But there's going to be a time. Listen, church, because we're Gentiles. There's going to be a time when there's going to be a radical change. It may be today. Maybe tomorrow. But I really feel like it's really coming soon. Because everything's coming together. The nation of Israel in 1948. You start seeing these various things. It's coming together. The next great prophetic thing that's going to happen is this. There's going to be a great flight. It's called caught up. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. Caught up. Yeah. You know this thing called gravity? Uh -huh. Jeff, Jeff you're, a, you're a scientist. You know a lot more about that than I do. But can you imagine not having a gravity hold on you? Weightlessness? That's what it's going to be like. It's going to be like weightlessness. And in a moment, we're going to experience that and we're going to fly. That's what's going to happen. It's called, we call it the rapture. It's called got caught up. And who is he going to take? A church that's ready. Ready. Are you ready? Can you honestly say I'm ready? Can you honestly say, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord? Can you honestly say, I know I'm going? I know I'm going. I'm ready. And I'm going because of Christ's blood is on my heart and my life. I'm going because I'm his servant and I've given him my life. I am not perfect. He is. And he's my advocate. He's my mediator. He's the one that, that is the go-between. And that you can stand before God without shame. You can stand before God and say, I know Jesus. And here's these great words that God says, Come on in. Come on in, my servant. Come into my presence. Won't that be great? Does anyone in here have any worry 
at all. No one even wants to admit to it. Oh, that's not holy to worry. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's wrong. But we do. None? No worry? Wouldn't that be great? No more worries in the world. All those things you've been consumed, consumed about won't even matter. You know, we get all worked up over relationships, worthiness, stuff. There's only one relationship, ultimately, that really matters. Amen. That is your relationship with your God. Amen. With your God. So we can know the reality of God today. Hey, just look at Israel. Look at the country. Study it, you'd be amazed. In that little temple mound, just think that Jesus is going to come back and rule and reign there for a thousand years. And that's going to be a major transition. That's all about bringing Israel back. And it says in the scripture, they will be saved. You know, they're going to have a great well, awakening. You talk about an awakening when the Christians are taken out for seven years and then he comes back and then you talk about an awakening with the Jews. They're going to realize what they've done. They didn't believe in the Messiah when he was right there. They didn't believe in who he is. And there's going to be a great revival coming with Israel. It's going to happen. It's been prophesied it's going to happen. And that remnant's going to rise up and the nation will be saved. It even says in the scripture, they'll be saved. Oh, will they have the adversity? You bet. It's going to happen. We need a revival in our hearts today. We need to be revived and excited and say, hey, I'm not going to worry about all these other things, what other people say, what they do. I am going to serve the king every day. Yeah. Whatever the church has done down the street or over there, I'm going to go by what this word says. And I'm going to stay the course because I'm a member of the remnant. Or are you? Are you a member of the remnant? Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, you are so good. Father, it's amazing to think that you would even care for a people named Israel, even though they've spit in your face as a nation, the majority. But you've never forgotten they are your people, and you've never forgotten the remnant. Just like God, you've never forgotten us. Father, I pray we honor you and praise you. Forgive us for compromise. Forgive us for not being bold enough to stand up for truth, even though it hurts. Forgive us, God, for when we do that, when we compromise, we're, we're selling you out. God, I pray we may stand for truth and right, and that we may glory in your presence, that we may understand your mercy and your grace. Lord, you are, are just that good. I thank you, God, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we sing our final song today, I'm going to ask a simple question. Can you say with all confidence, I am a child of God? All confidence. I'm a child of God. I am a child of God. Are you, are you, can you say with all, I am a child of God. It's not about, my past is gone. I've been set free. We are the most free people. We ought to be walking in victory. No matter what you're facing out there, hey, we are victorious. Because you know what? I am a child of the King. We ought to be shouting glory, shouting praise. Because God is that good. I've always showed you from Scripture even what's, what has happened, what is happening, and what's going to happen. What's going to happen in your life? So I look around and see different walks of life. Some of us scientists, some of us are insurance salesmen, some of us on and on and on. But you know what? That's all about facilitating our daily needs. That's not who we are. Amen. That's not who you are. That's right. You are a child of the king. You are part of the remnant. And he's promised you he will see you through. It's going to be okay. Hey, it's going to be okay. What you're going through is just a season. Because you're in it for a long haul. And we are victorious. Praise God.
There's so much more prophecy when you study it to see the reality of God. Hey, God is real, my friend. Don't let them lie to you. God is so real. Someday I'd love to have Jeff share his testimony because he was an atheist. Right? And you are now a child of the king. I'm blood by the saint of Jesus Christ. And I know that I know that I know I'm going to heaven because of his blood. Amen. 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 Orwell was a principal, but you're a child of the king. You're a part of the remnant. Isn't that amazing? Lord, I come, I confess his righteousness. Would you stand and sing? <clears throat>
Father, we need you desperately, Father. Father, we need you each and every day. Father, I'm aware that there are some that's hurting even their health right now. I pray, God, you are the great healer, that you would reach out and heal our bodies. Father, even one that may be struggling with depression, anxiety. Father, I pray you reach down, Spirit of God, and you rise up within them. And that they may be unified in you and reminded of how precious they are. And Father, maybe today that we are here celebrating you, celebrating our families, celebrating life, celebrating for you being there and continuing to be there. You will see us through. And we give you all the glory and the praise. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you that it's not based on how good we look, but who you are. And Lord, I thank you and plead the blood of Christ on this church. Let us be a light in this community each and every day. And as we go out today, Father, let us take the cross of Christ on our heart and mind. Let us bring others into the kingdom to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. I pray your blessing on each and every one of us. Exhort us, Father, and build us up. Let us be anointed by your king. And God, I pray you guide us each and every day. I thank you, Lord, for everyone that's here. I pray you reward their faithfulness. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, church. Oh, well, you know, that's what it's